Hello, welcome to Severin Church. Can you believe today is Sunday? Aren't you excited? Yes! And the men are going to sing, and all of us, so we hope you will enjoy that. We give that glory to God. Thank you so much for uh, last week packing all those meals. They just called me on Tuesday and said a lot of that food was going to uh, Kansas, helping people out there in the, in the United States, and some they were sending back down to Haiti. They need, still have a shortage of of food there in Haiti, so that's really great to um, help people that way. I appreciate all of your help in getting ready for that. Don't forget about uh, the sunrise service coming up on the 21st, and on that week of Holy Week, I think it's around the 18th, we'll give you the exact date, Pastor Bill and the choir and I are going to have a Maundy Thursday service. So remember that Thursday, it'll start at 7 o'clock, we'll have something in the bulletin about that. If you want to still order an Easter egg, you can. We're having a session meeting, and please bring, Beth is reminding us, the Joyful Hands group is, wants you to bring uh, uh, animal food, everything for the shelter. Is that correct? Am I saying that correctly? What you need and everything to get that there. Okay? Before we have our birthdays, I'm going to have an opening prayer now. Please pray with me. Dear Lord, we are grateful, Father God, for this privilege to be here in your house today. We ask God that you inspire us and that you open our hearts and our minds to what Pastor Bill would say to us today through the scriptures. Be with those that are sick and in need, and thank you, God, for this privilege to be in worship. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, any birthdays? Yes, Kelly. Kelly? <gasps> Great. Anyone else? Ready? All right. Are you having a birthday again, huh? All right. <laughs> All right, let's sing happy birthday. Would the children come forward for the children's message? Okay, I will, I will remind you. Okay. Oh, we've got a couple here today. How are we doing? That's what Bill said to remind you there's no children's church today or nursery. So you're, you're going to have to be stuck with me, okay? Instead of me today. So do you remember that song, that little song Shirley taught me to talk in uh, school? I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. Remember that song? Put your hands like this. It goes like this. This is the church. Can you do this? This is the steeple. Open the doors. Look at all the people. See that? Look at all the people. Can I try it again? Everybody, come on, join me. This is the church. This is the steeple. Open up the doors. And look at my people in the pew. There he is.
Those are great hymns, aren't they? I love that. Please join me in prayer. God, what a beautiful day it is you've given us in a great week. We've worked all week. We've been together. And God, we thank you for this opportunity just to pause and worship you. Father God, we have many things on our minds, but I pray that now we'll just unload them here and that we'll be attentive to your word and what you're going to say through us, through the music, through the prayers, through the message, through the offering. We are most grateful, God, for this church here, where it stands, and what it means to us, and the people here. We know when we open the doors, the people are here. And I pray, God, for each family here, and those that are absent from us today, let them know that we've missed them, either for sickness or whatever. Now, Father God, we lift up names of those people that we have on our hearts that we love and cherish that need prayers at this time. Amy. Christine. Thank you for the men and women that serve all across this world in the armed forces, our police forces, our first responders, all those that take care of us, Lord. We ask that you give them safety and great help as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to say by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
It was interesting, wasn't it? Last Sunday, Pastor Bill preached from the New Testament. Now he's back to the Old Testament. Exodus 33, verses 7 through 11. Exodus 33, verses 7 through 11. Moses had received the command to leave Sinai, and we pick right up here with what's going on now. Verse 7. Now Moses used to take the tent and pitch it outside the camp, far off from the camp. He called it the tent of meeting, and everyone who sought the Lord would go out to the tent of meeting, which was outside the camp. Whenever Moses went out to the tent, all of the people would rise and stand, each of them at the entrance of their tents and watched Moses until he had gone into the tent. When Moses entered the tent, the pillar of cloud would descend and stand at the entrance of the tent, and the Lord would speak with Moses. When all the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance of the tent, all the people would rise and bow down, all of them, at the entrance of their tent. Thus the Lord used to speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Then he would return to the camp, but his young assistant, Joshua, son of Nun, would not leave the tent. This is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. 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 Would you all three like to go down? word. <laughs> <laughs> Phoebe Brown was a, a woman who certainly knew how important worship was. She was a farmer's wife. And some of you here have farms and you know how much work goes into that. And so she also had little children and so she worked from sun up to sundown. And by the end of the day, she was exhausted spiritually, physically, and emotionally. But she had a habit every evening just before sunset. She would walk down her lane and find a little spot that she had in the woods, and she would sit down, and she would worship God. She would talk to Him, she would pray with Him, and she would even sing a song. And after a while, she would get back up, walk back into her house to reassume her duties. And she realized how important that worship was because it gave her strength to continue on through the rest of the evening. I want us to look at the importance of worship today. There are two types of worship. There's personal worship, and then there's corporate worship. And both are important. I do talk to some people, I invite them to church, and they're healthy, and they'll say, well, I watched the, the preacher on TV. And, and that's okay. There are times people have to do that because of illness or whatever. But I'll tell you, it's not the same thing watching someone on TV as it is being in the Lord's house and worshiping with your brothers and sisters in Christ. My week is not right if I don't come to church. Now, we all need a break every now and then. We'll take a little vacation. That's perfectly okay. The good Lord did that too. But far as a routine, it's important to come to church and be part of the corporate worship together. And that's what our scripture is telling us today. So what is worship? Worship is God blending His heart with our hearts here today and in your personal worship. It's seeking God's heart. Worshiping is the reason that you were created. Do you understand that? You were created to worship the Lord. See, we've gotten this all wrong, and I've said this before. We judge a church, or the pastor, or the choir, on how good it makes us feel. When we should be bringing our worship into God's house, has nothing to do with how you feel, but how you worship the Lord in this place. 
If the presence of God is truly in this place, then what we should do for that hour that we come together is sing His praises to Him, and listen to the spoken word, and worship the Lord together. You understand, it's not about the music. It's not about whether you dress up or not dress up. It's about what do you bring to worship our Lord. See, the people back in the Old Testament, which I love the Old Testament, you already tell them that every Sunday, but you know I love the Old Testament because people would bring their offerings to the Lord. And what they did, they brought their best every, every time that they worshipped. They came worshipping. They didn't come expecting anything else other than to praise the Lord. And Jesus said, there'll be a time that I'm looking for worshipers who will worship in spirit and in truth. That's a New Testament passage, Pastor Art. <laughs> spirit and truth. So what does spirit mean? It means that you're worshiping the Lord with your whole heart. You're not going, just going through the motions. There are sometimes people come to churches and they know what's going on. They'll sing the songs. They'll go through all the motions. How are you doing? How are you doing? Go home and nothing has ever changed in their life, nor did they worship the Lord that day. You understand what I'm saying? The Lord says, I want people who are true worshipers in spirit. That they feel the presence of God that's within them. And when we're all together, we as a corporate congregation are worshiping at the same time. And then also he said, spirit. And the next one he said was, in truth. It's not about religion. I don't like it when people say, oh, since you're a pastor, you must be religious. I don't know why, maybe it's just me, but I don't like that term anymore. I want people to say, oh, you're a pastor, it means you must love Jesus. That's what it's about, isn't it, Eileen? That's what it's about, is loving the Lord. It's not what kind of shingle you hang on the church, whether you're, you're Baptist, Methodist, Four Seas, or Episcopalian. It doesn't matter. It's, when we come together, we are corporately worshiping the Lord. That's our purpose. That's why God created us. So how do you prepare for worship for Sundays? Well, it's got to start on Monday. You have to have that time in your life when you are worshiping the Lord yourself. Now, this world is full of noise, is it not? My golly, it's noisy everywhere. And there's so many things that will, that will take away your attention. But you have to find a place where you can separate yourself from all the anxieties and tensions and worries of this world and all the noise and all the static where you can read God's Word and let Him talk to you. You understand that? If you're not doing that, you're missing a real blessing. That's what God wants us to do. He wants to have that intimate relationship with you. As Pastor Art read this morning, when he met with Moses, he was talking to Moses as a friend talks to a friend. Amazing enough, that's the same God that will talk to you if you listen. But most of the time we have stuff plugged in our ears or we got the TV going. There's just stuff happening. I have a place in my house in my sunroom. There's no TV, there's no radio out there. And I love getting in my big fat brown chair and reading God's Word and praying and meditating. That is my silent time. I even have earphones that I put on. Not the earphones, but the, the sound muffling ones, you know, where you can't hear anything. That's the coolest thing ever invented. Sometimes I even have to put those on so I can concentrate on what the Lord is trying to tell me. 
He wants that relationship. Think about married couples. If you were married and you didn't have time to speak to your wife or your husband, ever, except one hour on Sunday mornings, what would happen to that relationship? Eventually, a relationship might crumble and the love would grow cold. But the Lord wants to have that time with you. Let's do a self-check. How much time did you spend in the Word this week and praying to the Lord? Of all the things that you did this week, how much time did you give Him? When the Lord went to the cross, He gave His very best, didn't He? Shouldn't He expect our very best all the time? I want us to look at this Exodus 33, verse 7 through 11, because there are some things in here that I want to point out that helps us in our daily worship, in our corporate worship. Is it okay if I go verse by verse this morning and let's see what happens? Now, just a time frame, this is before the tabernacle. The tabernacle was a portable church that they had, remember? And they had the Ark of the Covenant and God's presence was behind the Holy of Holies. This is before any temple was ever built. Moses built a tent so the people could talk to God. And I want you to note where he put the tent. Let's look at this again. Verse 7, Exodus 33, verse 7. Now Moses used to take a tent and pitch it outside the camp, some distance away, calling it the tent of meeting. And anyone inquiring of the Lord would go to the tent of meeting outside the camp. Why would Moses erect a tent outside of the camp? Because he wanted a place where people could go and they weren't distracted. What if he had put that tent in the middle of all the other tents? You could hear people talking, you could hear animals, but he wanted a place where people would go away from the cares of this life. Do you see that? It was a designated place where people came to worship. So how does that fit in with our churches today? We have that today, do we not? We have a church. We've designated at 11 a.m. We will all come together and worship. We leave our homes and our cares behind us as we come through the doors, and we are here in God's house. So it's no different than what Moses erected then. And Moses would walk in there, and look what else would happen. And whenever Moses went out to the tent, all the people rose and stood at the entrance of their tents, watching Moses until he entered. Now we're getting into the corporate worship. All the tents, when they knew Moses was going away from them and going into the tent, they would stand at their entrance, their families. As Moses went in. Why? Because look what happens then. And as Moses went into the tent, the pillar of cloud would come down and stay at the entrance while the Lord spoke with Moses. When Moses went into the temporary church that they had, the people stood there and watched to see what happened. And the presence of God came in the form of a cloud and encircled the tent. And the people wanted to see that. Now why did they want to see it? Look what ne comes to happen next. Whenever the people saw the pillar of cloud standing at the entrance to the tent, they all stood and worshipped each at the entrance of his tent. Do you see what happened? They began corporate worship together. If Moses is in the tent and God is there, then we are going to worship in our tent. And I tried to envision this this week of all the people that were there, fathers and mothers and children 
standing at the entrance of the tent. And as Moses went in and they saw the cloud visibly coming down in front of the tent, they bowed down their face to the ground and began worshiping God too. Sometimes corporate worship will break out when there's one or two people truly worshiping. True worship is contagious. And I envision the father standing there explaining, listen to me men, explaining to their children what's happening. See little Isaac and and little Jeremiah, what you see now is God coming down to his people and he's talking to our leader Moses. And the people weeping as they're worshiping in the entrance of their tent. Why are they weeping? First of all, they're weeping for joy because God has come down to them. They remember the faithfulness of God that has led them to the place where they are today. They realize their sins have been forgiven and they're worshiping together as a family. Do you see that? It didn't say some of them. They all began worshiping together. They began sacrificing. If you can think of all those tents and all those altars and the people worshiping God as He's in there with talking to Moses. I believe songs would have erupted. There would be singing about the goodness and the graciousness of God. And this tent began singing, and this tent began singing. And before you know it, there was a choir. Everybody singing God's praises. Why? Because He's here among the people. When we walk through those doors, the Lord is present in this place. The Lord should be present in your life and in your home. People should feel that. It's a holiness. And the people's tears began to flow. They didn't let anything distract them from worshiping. Look what the rest of it says. And the Lord would speak to Moses face to face as a man speaks with his friend. Then Moses would return to the camp, but his young aide Joshua, son of Nun, never wanted to leave the tent. Some people said that he was there protecting the tent, protecting the holiness of God. I think he didn't want to go. He felt the presence of God and he was good. Isn't that the difference between a live church and a dead church? The presence of God is in a place and you can feel it. And you're not looking at your watch and thinking about the roast that's on and whether it'll burn or not. You're not thinking if Pastor Bill is a little long-winded today. You're not thinking about that. What you're thinking about is feeling the presence of God in your life. Psalm 4.4 says, Stand in awe and commune with your own heart and be still. Be still. That's hard for us to do. But we think about how many times the Lord got away by Himself and communed with God. Forty days in the desert, praying and fasting by Himself. He went away by Himself when He found out John the Baptist had been beheaded. He went alone after feeding the 5,000. And he prayed alone at the Garden of Gethsemane while his disciples slept. He didn't need a pastor or a choir. He was worshiping himself with his heavenly Father. There's a story in the Old Testament, 1 Kings chapter 19. And it talks about Elijah, and Elijah was very discouraged. And he told God, I am the only prophet that's left who has not bowed down to idols. I am the only one left. And God said, go stand at the mountain. And while Elijah was there, it says fire came from heaven. Began burning stuff up. 
but God was not in the fire. And it said a mighty wind came as Elijah was there, as he was holding on, as the wind was blowing, and God's voice was not in that. And then the Bible says, oh, I forgot the earthquake. There was an earthquake too. And Elijah probably said, surely the Lord will speak to me through the earthquake. And it said, God's voice was not in that. Then it said, a still, small voice whispered to me, Elijah. Do you see what God was doing? God was ministering to Elijah himself. Everybody else could see the fire, they could see the wind, they could see the earthquake. But God wanted to speak to Elijah himself, and he needed Elijah in a place where his two ears were unplugged, where he would listen. And the whisper came, Elijah, this is God. Wow. This week, find your quiet place. Open the Word of God and let Him begin talking to you and you talking to Him. It might be all strange for you. That's okay. You might say, well, Pastor Bill, I I don't understand the Scriptures. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, the Bible says the Holy Spirit will guide you and open your eyes to the wisdom of the Scriptures. We need to find that quiet place, don't we? Figure out something we can cut out this week where we can place God's Word where it needs to be. Give Him your best this week. Let's go to God in prayer. Father, thank You so much for the Scripture this morning about worshiping You. Father, even right now, may people feel Your presence within their hearts. Give people peace and comfort and strength Take away any fear and loneliness. And God, just fill them with your spirit today. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's stand. Severin Church now offers the availability of giving online. Go to our website, severinchurch.faith, and click on the Give Online tab. From there, you'll be taken to a secure site to create a unique login and password. Thank you for your generosity.